New this morning, we're giving you a first look at that very large avalanche on Mount Shasta with walls of snow 60 feet deep. No one was injured. What if one of America's most iconic peaks was hiding something unimaginable? What if the snow-capped beauty of Mount Shasta wasn't a symbol of serenity, but a ticking geological clock? Deep beneath Northern California, scientists have just confirmed a discovery that could change everything. A massive magma chamber, far larger, deeper, and more active than previously thought. And here's the question we're now forced to ask. Is Mount Shasta preparing for something big, or is it already too late to stop it? Let's head straight into the data and the danger. The Sleeping Giant of the Cascades. Mount Shasta towers at over 14,000 feet, dominating the Northern California skyline like a guardian of the Sierra. Its snow-capped slopes and pristine wilderness have drawn hikers, mystics, and adventurers for generations. Some come in search of spiritual enlightenment, others come simply for the view, but how many come knowing that they're standing on one of the most dangerous volcanoes in the United States? Because beneath the beauty lies something much more volatile. Shasta is not just a mountain, it's a stratovolcano formed by layers of hardened lava and ash from repeated violent eruptions. It belongs to the Cascade Volcanic Arc, a chain of potentially explosive giants stretching from British Columbia to Northern California. And Shasta may be one of the most unpredictable of them all. Its last known eruption occurred in the 1780s, long before modern monitoring systems. Before that, geological records suggest eruptions every 600 to 800 years but the pattern is not exact. In fact, some of its most violent activity occurred after only short periods of dormancy. Could we be measuring on the wrong timeline? And here's where it gets more unsettling. Researchers believe that the current period of dormancy might not be calm at all. Recent ground surveys have found hardened lava from relatively recent flows that never made it to the surface. In other words, the volcano might have tried to erupt and simply didn't succeed. But what happens the next time pressure builds? If Shasta erupts again, how much warning will we get? Will it come with days of tremors or only hours? Could it begin with a puff of steam or a thunderous explosion? And if the eruption mirrors those of the past, how far will the devastation reach? Could ash clouds ground aircraft could lahars flood entire valleys? Could pyroclastic flows, moving faster than a car on the highway, catch communities off guard? So here's the real question. Is Mount Shasta overdue for another eruption? Or is it quietly preparing, just out of sight, for something far more destructive than we've planned for? The discovery that changed everything. In March 2025, Seismic researchers released a stunning report. Beneath Mount Shasta lies a massive, dual-chambered magma system, twice as large as previous estimates. The news sent ripples across the volcanology community. What had long been suspected was now confirmed. Mount Shasta's inner workings are far more complex and far more dangerous than anyone had realized. Using deep earth tomography, Scientists revealed not one, but two interconnected magma reservoirs. One sits at around seven kilometers beneath the surface. The other nearly 20 kilometers down, and it's far from dormant. And this second chamber, it's hotter, more volatile, and, according to the data, rising. Could it be the fuel for Mount Shasta's next catastrophic eruption? Gas analysis from remote sensors has detected elevated CO2 and SO2 emissions around the summit and along several hidden fissures on the southern slope. What's more, 
These gas signatures match the chemical profile of gases released during previous eruptive phases. Could these emissions be a red flag? A signal that magma is moving closer to the surface? Thermal imaging has revealed hot spots developing in symmetrical patterns around the peak. These anomalies suggest structural stress points, areas where the mountain's rocky skin may begin to crack. Could these be the birthplaces of future vents? Even more troubling, a series of low-frequency harmonic tremors, subterranean vibrations that often precede volcanic eruptions, have been on the rise. These tremors don't occur in bursts. They pulse steadily, like a heartbeat. But whose heartbeat? The Earth's or the volcano's? What happens if this deeper reservoir breaches the upper chamber? Could it cause a pressurization event strong enough to rupture both systems? Could the entire mountain destabilize? Some researchers warn of a cascading eruption scenario. Magma from the deeper chamber rushes upward, overpressurizing the upper chamber and creating a violent chain reaction. The result? A blast that could rival the 1980 Mount St. Helens eruption or surpass it. So when Mount St. Helens woke up in the spring of 1980, uh, it was too good to be true. I could hardly believe that it was really happening. On this day in 1980, Mount St. Helens blew its top at 8.32 in the morning. The massive eruption triggered landslides, mud flows, and floods that killed 57 people and caused vast amounts of damage to timber, land, businesses, and wiped out entire neighborhoods. And the deeper concern? The shape of the underground system appears to be evolving. New satellite gravimetric data suggests the deeper chamber is expanding laterally. That means magma isn't just rising, it's spreading. Could this mean the formation of new vents? or even an off-center eruption far from the current summit? A team of volcanologists from the California Volcano Observatory recently discovered new ground cracks more than five miles south of the summit, fissures that appeared geologically fresh. Could magma already be forcing its way through? And what about the possibility of phreatomagmatic explosions? With so much glacial melt and hydrothermal water in Shasta's system, could water mixing with magma trigger sudden, steam-driven blasts that precede the main eruption? So we must ask, are we witnessing the prelude to a geological catastrophe? Is this a slow burn building to a sudden reckoning? Could Shasta's silent cone suddenly rupture in an explosive chain reaction? And if so, will we have the knowledge and the time to act before it's too late? A danger hidden in plain sight. Mount Shasta isn't some remote Alaskan peak. It's surrounded by towns, power lines, and tourism. It's not a far off wilderness. It's right in our backyard. And that's exactly what makes it so dangerous. Interstate 5, California's north-south artery, passes right beneath its shadow. Thousands of vehicles travel this route daily. The city of Redding, population over 90,000, sits just 60 miles to the west. But that's not all. Small towns like Mount Shasta, Dunsmuir, Weed, and McLeod are nestled right along the volcano's flanks. What happens to these communities if the mountain wakes up? And then there's the ash. In a major eruption, wind-carried ash could blanket Northern California, reach the Bay Area, and disrupt air traffic as far as Seattle or Phoenix. What happens when airports shut down? When air filters clog, crops fail, and solar panels stop working, could a single plume of ash trigger a chain of events felt across the West Coast? But the real fear? Lahars. Mount Shasta is loaded with ice and snow. In fact, it holds more glacier ice than any other mountain in California. When fire meets ice, you don't just get steam. You get catastrophic lahars. These massive mud flows rush down valleys like liquid concrete moving at speeds of up to 60 miles per hour. Entire towns can be buried in under an hour. Could evacuation orders reach rural residents in time? What if the eruption happens in the dead of night? Would the early warning systems be enough to clear the roads before disaster strikes? And here's a deeper question. How prepared are we, really? Have evacuation drills been run? Are local hospitals equipped to handle respiratory emergencies? 
Do nearby power stations and reservoirs have protocols in place? In 2024, researchers conducted a simulated eruption drill using data from Shasta's most likely eruption scenarios. The results were sobering. Traffic bottlenecks formed within minutes. Communications failed in multiple zones. Many residents had no idea they were in the Lahar danger zone. Could we afford to ignore such results? The landscape around Mount Shasta is cherished for its beauty. But could that beauty be the very thing that blinds us to the threat? Are we building homes, schools, and infrastructure in places that should be clear zones? Experts now say some communities may need permanent relocation planning in the event of future unrest. Are we ready to make those difficult decisions before nature forces our hand? And what about the economic cost? How would local industries like tourism, forestry, and agriculture cope with even a partial eruption? Could the impact echo far beyond California's borders? Mount Shasta may be a tourist destination today, but are we forgetting the power it holds beneath its surface? Could the landscape we love be the very thing that turns against us? Could we evacuate in time? Would the alerts be fast enough? And what if the eruption comes without warning, like others in the Cascades before it? Are we ready for the day the mountain stops sleeping? The unsettling clues beneath our feet. The research team didn't just stop at imaging. They installed new ground deformation sensors, tilt meters, gas monitors, and even fiber optic strain sensors in discrete locations around the volcano. Their goal? To detect the smallest shifts, the quiet whispers beneath Mount Shasta's rocky shell. What they found? Ground tilt. Microscopic, but measurable. Carbon isotope ratios matching deep mantle sources. Localized uplift, millimeters per month, around Shasta's southeast ridge. Changes in magnetic field readings, small but consistent. One scientist described the volcano's behavior as preparatory, like an engine humming before ignition. But what's fueling this rise in activity? Could this be a temporary fluctuation or the early chapters of an eruption sequence? Is Mount Shasta simply stretching its crustal muscles or bracing for something far more forceful? Some of the most compelling data came from gas emission studies. Instruments placed near fumaroles recorded increased concentrations of helium-3, a gas linked to deep earth sources, and radon, often released as rock fractures under pressure. What does it mean when gases from the mantle start climbing toward the surface? Could this be the volcano's way of exhaling before a major event? Satellite interferometry has detected a pattern of inflation that resembles a slow ballooning of the Earth's crust. The inflation isn't uniform. It's asymmetric, more pronounced on the volcano's southeastern flank. Could this be a weak spot, a future rupture point? Adding to the mystery are newly discovered microquakes, too weak to be felt, but perfectly aligned along a previously unknown fault. Are these cracks forming as the mountain shifts under mounting pressure, or are they conduits forming for rising magma? Recent modeling simulations have taken the data a step further. Using dynamic stress mapping and predictive thermal profiling, volcanologists have recreated multiple eruption scenarios based on current activity. Some models show magma rising through previously unknown chimneys, while others suggest shallow dike intrusions beneath glacial beds. Could the interaction of heat and ice be far more dangerous than previously assumed? And then there's the question of seismic silence. Certain sectors around the volcano have exhibited quiet zones, areas with notably less seismic activity. While that might sound reassuring, in volcanology, it often isn't. These seismic gaps may be areas where stress is locked, where pressure is building quietly, waiting to be unleashed. Could the calmest zones be the most dangerous? In early 2025, a cluster of infrasound detectors picked up ultra-low frequency vibrations, inaudible to humans, but traceable to deep magma movements. These signals were later correlated with CO2 gas pulses detected just days later. Could these sound waves be Mount Shasta's subterranean alarm system? And how close are we to a tipping point? Are we watching a system slowly pressurize, or one already teetering on the edge? Could plate movement be feeding the chambers faster than we thought? Could tectonic stress and magma migration be combining in ways we don't yet understand? Or is something new 
something unknown, awakening beneath the Earth's crust. What if this is our only warning? What if the signals we're seeing are not speculation, but countdown? And what if the time to act is shorter than we think? Lessons from the past, warnings for the future. In 1786, a British explorer reportedly witnessed an ash plume rising from Mount Shasta. Native oral traditions speak of fire from the mountain that came without warning, destructive, fast, and unexplained. These aren't just legends, they are lived memories passed down through generations, etched into the cultural fabric of the region. And in 1915, nearby Lassen Peak, once thought dormant, erupted with devastating power. It blew a massive crater into its summit and sent pyroclastic flows cascading for miles. Homes were destroyed, forests were flattened, the skies darkened, and ash fell like snow. So what if Shasta isn't dormant? What if it's just waiting, gathering pressure, until the moment comes? The historical record suggests that large eruptions in the Cascades often arrive after long periods of silence. But is silence safety, or is it simply buildup? Some geologists now believe we may be entering a new active phase in the Cascadia Arc. Mount Shasta, Mount Hood, even Rainier could all be linked by deep, slow magma movement under the North American plate. Could this shared connection make one eruption the trigger for another? Geochemical similarities between volcanic gases from these mountains point to a deeper reservoir, an enormous source of molten rock feeding the entire arc. If this system becomes destabilized, could we see a domino effect, a chain reaction of eruptions from north to south? And how would we respond? Are our current monitoring systems enough to detect a cascade of volcanic activity? Would emergency services be overwhelmed by multiple threats unfolding across several states? We've seen this pattern before, one eruption following another. In Indonesia's Sunda Arc, along Iceland's rift zones, could the Cascades be next? Is the clock already ticking? Are we prepared for the consequences if time runs out? What lessons have we truly learned from the past? Are we simply waiting for the next eruption to teach us what we should have already known? And when the next plume rises, will it mark the beginning of a chapter or the end of our preparedness? The Earth is whispering again, and this time it's whispering from beneath one of California's most iconic landmarks. Mount Shasta may not erupt tomorrow, it may not erupt next year, but the warning signs are no longer just theory, they're data. In recent months, scientists have ramped up drone surveillance, aerial infrared mapping, and deep crustal soundings. What they're seeing is not a single anomaly, but a system under pressure, a growing chorus of geological signals that seem to echo louder each week, microquakes gas pulses, ground tilt, all synchronized like instruments tuning for a performance none of us want to witness. And what if we're not just watching a single volcano, but a node in a much bigger network of instability? What if Shasta's reawakening is part of a pattern, one that stretches across the spine of the Cascades, hinting at deeper tectonic shifts we have yet to fully understand? If Mount Shasta goes, what follows? Will it set off vibrations felt at Hood, at Rainier, at Glacier Peak? Could this be nature's version of a chain reaction, a slow motion warning wrapped in seismic riddles? If we ignore this moment, if we dismiss the clues because we fear alarmism, what price do we pay? Preparedness isn't panic, it's wisdom, and the cost of ignoring early warnings has always been paid in hindsight. So the question isn't if something is coming, it's whether we'll be ready when it does. Will this be the eruption we predicted or the one we chose to ignore? What do you think? Is Mount Shasta gearing up for something massive? Let us know in the comments. What would you do if it erupted tomorrow? Subscribe for more deep dives into Earth's geological mysteries. Like the video if you believe science should never be ignored, especially when it comes from deep below because sometimes the calmest mountain hide the loudest screams.